Awesome. Yay. Okay. So welcome everyone to our Wednesday night yin, which tonight has specifically our Nidra aspect as well, which is so, so exciting. And as we're checking in, I want you to grab any props that you might need. And if we have a strap, I'd say grab a strap. If we don't have a strap, no worries. Maybe just grab like a towel. Um, if we've got pillow, blanket, bolsters, grab all that because we're going to use that, especially at the end when we go into that Shavasana space and go also into Nidra. Okay, so yeah, grab your props. I'm very excited because I have a really nice series, but I'm also excited to talk about Nidra. And toward the end, I'll also be talking a little bit about the symbol of Om. Because when I teach you, I always teach you what I think is the most important aspects. And so when I understood more about sleep and the gut and about yin and the aspects of Nedra, you know, it's, I really felt like this was the gold and that this is what I wanted to bring to all of you. And what's funny is that now we have the data to see more about what's actually happening when we do these practices. So one of the big finds was that when we do Nidra, for example, even like 20 minutes of Nidra shows like a 65% increase in dopamine. So we're seeing really big changes in things like hormones, neurotransmitters, but there's something else that's happening here. And this is something that modern neurobiology is understanding, but ancient yoga has known for thousands of years. And that's this, that when you're in Shavasana and you enter into sleep, there's that space in between. And it's so important that there are actually aspects of yoga where they really talk very specifically about not just our waking state and our sleeping states, but these other spaces as well. And so what you're actually doing is you're hovering and it's like you're just about to enter into that first round of that uh, 90 minute realm and that NREM. But what happens there is the things that we hear and the things that are around us are coded directly into the memory. And so there are very interesting things, again, that yoga is known for a long time, but modern neurobiology is saying absolutely that when we're in that space, there is something that's very specific. Now, this is part of why Nidra was sort of like a hidden secret because with this great power comes great responsibility. So modern hypnotism, actually has its roots in Nidra. And because uh, England had occupied, uh, Britain had occupied India. And so they essentially found this practice of hypnotherapy from Nidra and Shavasana. So just understand that this is a powerful practice. And we're going to see that with great intention, we can do phenomenal things here to change our lives. But just understand the background and part of why it's such a phenomenal practice and why it was also like a great secret of yoga. Okay, so let's come to seated. And first we're checking in. Some of you are you know, all around the world. Some of you are in warm places and cooler places. Here in Portland, we've got a warmer day. And I want us to be noticing how things like the temperature, things like how we've been sleeping, all of that can really shift how yin feels. Some of these poses we do every week, they might feel different depending on things like temperature. Okay, lengthen the spine, draw up and out the crown of the head. And if we want, we might even close the eyes. And first we're just taking a moment and we're scanning the body. Notice how the joints feel. Notice that digestive realm. Yeah, let's take a few breaths. And then we set our intentions. And so we bring our hands very, very gently to the heart. And we remember that all the things that we do, all the things that we say, all the energetic arrows that we shoot, all the seeds that we plant, they have a big impact. And we set our intentions now. Let's release the hands very, very slowly. Good. We start with our yin practice, which is a perfect prep to bring us into nidra. And the final shapes that we do in yin are also shapes where 
we may even find ourselves falling maybe into sleep and that's good. So that when we come to that space, Shavasana into Nidra, we will feel really kind of rested, but maybe not fall asleep. And know that it's okay if we do fall asleep, but in time, we're gonna learn to hover in between wake and sleep. And so now we prep the body. Okay, very, very gentle. Let's move those props away. And I'm gonna have us actually start in child's pose and I'm gonna give us four minutes there. We might wanna do that variation with the knees together. And we might have the variation where the knees are apart. Yeah, the hands can go forward or the hands can go back and any props that we're using. Let's take a few minutes there and we very intentionally start in this seed and I'll talk about why. Okay, child's pose variation, four minutes. Let's find that very, very first stretch. And we start like this tiny seed because part of our Nidra practice is Sankalpa, meaning seed and that we plant a seed. And all of the things that we do and say and the energetic arrows that we shoot and the seeds that we plant, they matter. And so by being aware of this Sankalpa, we start to plant this seed and it begins to transform the mind. Just keep breathing. We start to go yin side. the face soft as we're breathing here gently observe where you feel the most sensation Keep breathing. We're noticing the heartbeat. We're noticing the breath. Very good, release that first piece. 
Yeah, take it slow, anything at all that we want in between. And we're noticing clicking, popping, movement. The practices provide space and they bring awareness, not only you know, about the body, but how things are changing. Many of you have done yin with me for years. So noticing how some areas, maybe they've gotten a lot easier and some they change a little bit slower. So we're noticing all of these details. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to come to seated and I'm gonna give a choice. So maybe do like soles of the feet together, like a more diamond kind of butterfly. Or if we'd really rather, if we feel like we need the dragonfly more, maybe do this one. And of course, if we love frog, you know, if we're working on something else, then you can do whatever piece you're working on. I'm gonna demo with that butterfly variation, which honestly, I actually take my feet a little bit wider. So it's kind of more like a diamond. Yeah, and just feel it out. This is one where you might get more of the adductor, but if the back is tighter, we might primarily feel it in the back. Yeah, just go really, really slow. Good. Remember, we can tuck the chin. We don't round the back in some of the practices of yoga, but you totally can with yin. Just keep the face soft. As we're breathing here, we remember that yoga started with 500 years of just the seated meditation. And so the only shapes were two ways that you sat to do seated meditation. And after 500 years, there emerged only 12 stretches that actually looked a lot like yin because they were really basic stretches that you would do to then do more seated meditation. But the 12th pose that they found was Shavasana. And this changed everything because they weren't holding Shavasana for three minutes, they were holding it for like an hour with the goal of trying to be super relaxed, but not fall asleep. And it's really hard to do Shavasana for an hour and not fall asleep. And they found themselves going into these spaces that were not quite awake and not quite asleep and accidentally discovering a great deal about the neurobiology of sleep simply by finding Shavasana but they also knew it was really powerful. And so Shavasana was sort of hidden. They decided that they would tell everyone it was the most important pose because they knew that nobody would believe them anyway. And so Shavasana remained hidden in some form for a really long time. Breathing, keep letting go.
Deep breathing. And we're noticing details is what we feel in this moment the same as when we first went into the stretch? Do we feel it in a different area? Very, very good. Now let's release. Yeah, go super, super slow. And we feel. Excellent. Yeah, we might feel like clicking, popping movement. Take whatever we want in between. We can just lay on the back if we want or take cat cow. I really think that yin is the best prep I've ever found for nidra. Because sometimes, you know, if we, if we can't get even comfortable in Shavasana, then that can prevent us from even having that experience. But also if we're like really tired, sometimes, you know, we might fall just into sleep. Yin can actually bring us into this really sweet space where the body and the mind are really just perfectly ready for that nidra practice. So we're doing a little bit of everything. I want us to look at the hamstring work. I'm actually gonna have us do both of the legs forward. So we might feel a lot in the back, if you've got your strap, some of you will use that strap or towel here. Some of you are gonna find that you're gonna get very little in the back of the leg. You might wanna increase stretch in the back by putting props or something here. Yeah, so whatever way you're working on that, I'm gonna give us five full minutes. Um, we're really opening that backside of the body. And again, we're prepping ourselves for Nidra. So find that caterpillar variation and let's do five minutes there. Very good. Yeah, listen to the body, just find that very first stretch. As we're breathing here, um, I will tell you, and some of you have probably heard me talk about this before, but many years ago, like 15 years ago, when I was in India, I met a very, very wise person down by the river Ganges. And this was in Rishikesh, which is the holy yoga city of the world. And this person imparted great knowledge to me which I didn't completely understand until I had found yin and until I understood nidra. But when I met this gentleman, he had been meditating for like 40 years by the Ganges. And when I told him that I taught yoga in America, he was like, that's awesome, that's great. Everybody can attain enlightenment. But he knew that the West was really into the asana and the physical part of yoga. And so he, he demonstrated for me a whole bunch of really crazy gymnastics-y complicated shapes. And then he said, those don't really matter. He said, the fastest way to enlightenment is sitting and being in half lotus or full lotus or even just laying in shavasana. He said, but when I tell Westerners that they rarely believe me and they often need to burn through like the yang practices, they need the asana, but really the fastest way is in these subtle spaces. And this is the truth, but these are also the most challenging practices. And I want us to note that every single practice has different things to teach. And it's also very natural for us to have a more young practice, especially like in our twenties. 
but what we need can shift. And we may find that we've become more drawn to those subtle practices, the meditation and the yin and the nidra. Just keep breathing, be proud of yourselves. I know it's not easy, but it will be worth it, just keep going. Keep breathing, keep the face soft. Notice what you feel in the back of the legs. And with our awareness, scan all up and down the spine, all around the spine. Very, very good. Release. Yeah, go super, super slow. Feel. Very gentle. You might want to take a moment on the back. We might do like cat cow, whatever you want in between. We're going to do some front body, a little bit of uh, glute, some twisting, and then we'll be moving into nidra. Now, what we're going to be doing next is, I'm actually gonna give an option. I'm gonna demo the lunge, but you're my advanced students. And so I want you to choose if you're loving that half saddle or that one that we had looked at, um, the cattail variation, which was the one that was like, um, I'm gonna demo it this way. So that's the one where you can be like, like here, right? Stretching it kind of like this, or even like the laying down kind of style. So there's different ways to look at the, the quad work. But a lot of you are gonna be looking at either like, yeah, that kind of half saddle one that we've been doing a lot. I'm gonna demo through the lunge and let's do, let's just do three minutes. So we're gonna do three on each side and I want us to really, really protect the knee. Okay, if you're following me, you're gonna do right leg forward and that left knee is gonna be down. And remember the hands can be anywhere because it's all about finding some stretch in that front left area. Yeah, and we might be feeling it also in here, but probably here as well. Listen to your body, you might drop the hands down or even you know, some of you will walk that right foot out and bring the hands more on the inside. Yeah, whatever we wanna do. Okay, so as we're breathing here, I'm gonna tell you something I was thinking about this week. And I, I really feel that I can never emphasize enough how proud I am of my students because I know that yin is hard. And I know that for us to let this practice become a part of our life, it means that we have this dedication to revealing truth in the self. And part of why this is so hard is because this was the job of the guru. So remember that it is only, like America has only known about yoga for a hundred years. Yogananda came here like in like 19, like 29 or something, right? So less than a hundred years. 
but what we see is that this practice, right? We have these practices that have these really, really, you know, ancient roots, and we are just starting to understand. But for a long time, these were traditions and families, and they were secrets of families. And so you often couldn't practice unless you had been chosen to. Um, if outsiders wanted to practice, there was often great initiation. Like you would often, like there's talk about, oh, you have to like wait on the porch of the teacher for many days and you have to, you know, really do what the teacher asks. And this was like this whole realm of having the guru. And the reason was that then, then the guru would impart all of their knowledge to you if you became their student. However, the guru's job was to help you to become your best self, which means doing whatever is needed to become strong and flexible and provide harmony and be our best self, which means that let's say, for example, you know, my guru might notice, you know, if my, my front kick or my forward fold is crappy, then that's what I work on. But if I'm really good at backbending, they're not going to have me do more of what's easy. So part of what you're doing is you're doing the hardest thing of all. You're being the painter and the model, right? As Alice Walker says, love that. We are having to be both, right? We have to be the teacher and the student here. This is the work that the guru used to do. But with yin, we have to get to know what do we need more of? What do we need less of? We might be practicing you know, quite a bit of yoga, but the traditions originally were the individual's entire life. And so know that you are doing something very, very phenomenal in this practice. Just keep going. Keep breathing. Now, you're gonna release that first side, feel that rebound in the body, take it super, super slow. We're creating space. And we're gonna switch the sides when we're ready. And we might be finding that the sides are a little different or a lot different. And again, you're noting the details, but you're also noticing, is it changing? Is it different than a year ago, You know, two, three years ago? Okay, let's come to that second side and find that very, very first stretch. Keep the face soft. Notice details. Sometimes we'll feel like clicking, popping movement. Just keep breathing. Keep the face soft. As we're breathing here, we remember that Nidra is about planting a seed. And so many of you have practiced yin before, perhaps you already know your song Kulpa. But if we don't, we may begin to gently think about what it is 
that we want to create, uh, you know, change in what realm do we want to create change in? What is it that we want? Remember that the Sankalpa has a lot of power and even the way that we phrase it matters. So for example, instead of saying, I want to be a good partner, I would say, I am a good partner. Instead of saying, I want to be a good friend or I want to be a good parent, I would say, I am a good friend, I am a good parent. Because even the way that you set your intentions here, I want you to do it in a way where it is already happening. And this is part of how we find that sankalpa. So we might just gently begin to think about what our sankalpa will be. Now release there, yeah, take it slow, feel. We might get some clicking, popping movement, yeah. Anything that we want in between. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna be doing um, a gentle twist, which it may be the piece that is serving also as the glute work. And so they're actually ending up being included in the same piece because I'm gonna give you an option for it. This has become one of my favorite ways to work this. Here's a strap. So I recommend if you have a strap or a towel or any piece of fabric, you might be using it. And so what I really like about this stretch, um, and I'm gonna show you from a couple angles. So. If I'm, let's see, I'm gonna show you this way. So if I am um, to be on the back and I'm gonna be working and taking this strap around my right leg, I could have this like way up here. I could have it down here because what I was noticing was that it can really change what we feel. Just this, you know, you might get some really nice ham stretch here, some IT band. So just noticing those details, really, let it be your own. So we can do that piece with um, the strap prop. If you would rather do that more classic twist that we often do, which is where you'd have like the left leg on the ground, right knee in and just drop it over. You could do this one. But again, there's that option to do left leg on the ground and taking strap or towel around that right leg. Yeah. So whatever you want to do, you could look up or look to the right hand. And what we're doing is we're doing a nice kind of ringing out here and we're prepping our body for that nidra space okay so we're gonna do a couple minutes on each side yeah just find that very first stretch and we might get like clicking popping yeah a lot of us hold tension in the low back. As Westerners, the core can get kind of weak and then we get overly tight in the back. Just go slow. Keep the face soft. Keep the face soft, keep breathing.
Really good. Now we release that first side. Yeah, just really gentle. Go slow. Notice what we feel in between. And we'll come to that second side. That will be the final active shape before we go into Nidra. And so some of you might be putting the right leg on the ground and keeping that left knee in and just dropping it over to the right. If you're following me, you might actually be taking that strap or towel and hooking it around that left leg and dropping it over to the right. So yeah, we could look toward our left hand or we can look up. Yeah, whatever works. Find that very first stretch and we'll breathe there. That's the one. And as we're coming to the second side, I want us to know that Nidra is something that we can practice every day. And the piece that we're gonna to do tonight will be of course recorded. And then I'll keep it up for about a month or so so that then you can come back to it and I actually really recommend that you do so that we continue to plant the same seed, but also so that you see how every time we do Nidra, it can be really different. So I really recommend that if we think of it um, to check in with the recording and maybe try it a couple of times this week, you might do even the Nidra um, completely on its own, like without doing yoga before as an experiment and just getting to know more about this space because it might become a big part of our yoga practice. The final thing I want you to know, this is something I find that's really kind of cool. I really dig Deepak Chopra and he's so into Nidra and he talks about how he really got into yoga and like into Nidra because he wanted to quit smoking, but it works and we have to remember that the roots of modern hypnotism, they all come from Nidra. So there is this really serious piece that we can transform our lives if only we know how. So just know that the best, right? Even Deepak, he knows what's up. It's all about the Nidra. Just keep breathing. Just keep letting go. All right, very, very gentle. We're going to release. And I want you to take anything that you need before we move into that next space of Nidra. And I also want you to note something because um, we've done this one before, which is where I'm combining basically two Nidra um, transcriptions together. And I actually pull in this realm of the chakras. I want you to note something that, so if you were to see me laying in this way, when we are describing this and actually the way that we're supposed to envision the chakras is like this, that we imagine the lotuses are actually growing up like this so that when you see head on, you see the flower, but we are meant to imagine them actually growing right out of those, those centers. So just keeping that in mind, that visualization will be helpful as we come into our nidra. So now I want you to find a very, very comfortable space. You're finding your way into Shavasana. Be sure that we are warm 
And we might want to uh, dim the lights where we are, get very, very comfortable. We might even feel like we need to use the bathroom before and just make sure that we are ready. All right, and so we start to make our way to our Shavasana space and we're getting really comfortable, we're getting really warm. Now let us get ready for the practice of yoga nidra. Lie down and cover yourself, at least the feet if necessary. Head should be resting on the mat. Close the eyes and lie in Shavasana, palms facing upwards, feet a little apart. Any movement that you want to make, please do it now then you should not allow yourself to move physically. We keep the eyes shut and the mouth closed. We stop all physical movement and lie completely motionless. The body is quiet, but under your control. You are still conscious, although you are not allowing the body to move. No physical movement. No movement of the toes, fingers, head, or legs. No quivering of any part of the body. No tightening of any muscles. No stretching of the body. Now take your awareness inside and begin to investigate the whole physical body every joint and muscle should be completely relaxed. Relax the palms, fingers, feet, toes, ankles, calf muscles, knees, thighs, hamstrings, buttocks, back, shoulders, chest, arms, elbows, hands, head, and neck. Relax the whole body. Investigate if there is any tension, and if there is tension, consciously loosen it. If the muscles are tight, release them. Now there should be no more physical movement. During the period of yoga nidra, you should not move the physical body. No physical movement should take place under, under any circumstances. No matter what sensations you may feel, whether itching, pain, mosquitoes or insects biting you, no matter what happens, you should not move the physical body. This is the first and most important condition for yoga nidra. You are also not supposed to fall asleep. Yoga Nidra is the practice to make you more and more aware, to raise the subtle inner awareness, not the gross upper layer. 
Let the whole body remain quiet for some time and work with the subtle awareness. Now that your whole physical body is quiet and not moving, try to experience all the subtle movements in the body. The physical body is moving on its own without effort in spite of all control. Which parts are moving? Where is the movement? Are your feet moving? Are the toes, fingers, or thighs twitching? Is the head turning to one side? Is the chest or the stomach moving? Yes, the stomach is moving forward and back, up and down. You are not doing this. It is happening on its own. Just watch. How does all this movement take place? Have you discovered the reason for the movements of the navel, the stomach, the abdomen, and the chest? They seem to be expanding and contracting a little bit all the time. The breath is flowing in and out and as a result, the chest seems to be expanding and contracting just a little. In the throat, between the collarbones, there also seems to be some movement. The depression of the throat seems to be moving upward and downward with respiration. The breath is flowing in and out through the nostrils. The breath is the cause of all this inner movement, even causing palpitation in Shashumna and between the two eyebrows. In spite of all your control, movement is still occurring in the physical body. This has been going on by itself all the 24 hours of the day from the moment you were born. Become aware of this movement, the movement of the breath, the inspiration and expiration through the nostrils. This breath is causing movement in many parts of the body. The grossest movement occurs in the abdomen, stomach, heart, chest, throat, and nostrils. These are the grosser movements which I am bringing to your notice. Of course, the whole body is vibrating. Each and every hair of the body and all the pranas are moving, but ordinarily we are unaware of it. The breath is going in and out through the nostrils. Particularly watch the process of the breath. The movement seems to be from the navel up to the throat in, and from the throat down to the navel out. Keep on watching, just witness it. This is Shakshi Bhava, the attitude of witnessing. And now let your consciousness rotate between the throat and the navel. The movement of the breath may be through the nostrils, 
but the consciousness must go from the navel to the throat and from the throat to the navel. Before beginning the actual practice of yoga nidra, we make a sankalpa, a short resolve. A resolve can be of three types, material, mental, or spiritual. First, you must choose what kind of resolve you want to make. Some people resolve to get rid of bad habits, cure their sickness, serve humanity in a certain way, achieve some siddhi or mysterious power. But it is better not to waste the power of sankalpa on small things. A person that is wise makes a sankalpa to attain divine qualities or to achieve progress on the spiritual path. Therefore, we consider well before making our sankalpa. Choose one thing as your resolve for yoga nidra. We are free to make our own choice. We can make any resolve, but the sankalpa should be very brief, only a few words. The same sentence should always be used whenever you repeat the sankalpa. The wording should not change even if the meaning stays the same. Every time you practice yoga nidra, meditation, or any sadhana, you should remember your sankalpa in the beginning and repeat it a few times. You can decide on your sankalpa now. If you have decided, recall it. Although you don't have to hurry in choosing your resolution, you can make it now. Make a resolve and fix the language of that resolve. Don't make the resolve today in English, tomorrow in Italian, and the next day in Hindi. Whichever phrase and language you choose, it should always be the same until the resolve is fulfilled. The sankalpa made during the practice of yoga nidra is always fulfilled. It never fails, but you cannot be impatient. And you must wait patiently and keep practicing it. Repeat the sankalpa mentally. Now again, continue with your breath awareness. Make sure you are not moving your physical body. Keep the sleep away and avoid becoming unconscious. Do not become lost in thought. Remain conscious and aware of what I am saying. Follow consciously and not mechanically. Know that you are following what I am saying. Now I will guide you through the different parts of your physical body. One by one, I will take your consciousness to each and every part of your physical body. At the same time, you will visualize each part and repeat its name mentally. You are not going to make any physical movements. You are only going to move the consciousness. Visualize that particular part which I will name and say the name mentally. Go along with me at the same speed. I will move from one part to another and you will follow along with your awareness. Get ready to move your consciousness. Do not move your body. Now visualize the right hand thumb and say mentally right hand thumb, second finger, 
third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger. Visualize all five fingers together. Palm of the hand, back of the hand, wrist, forearm. I am guiding you along the right side. I will tell you when to change the left one. Visualize the right elbow, upper arm, shoulder, armpit, right chest, side, waist, hip, buttock, thigh, hamstring, knee, calf muscle, ankle, heel, sole, top of the foot, right big toe, second big toe, third big toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, all five toes together. Now, take your consciousness to the left side. Just as we were visualizing the parts of the right side, now we will visualize those parts on the left side. Start with the left hand thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, all five fingers together. Palm of the hand, back of the hand, wrist, forearm, elbow, upper arm, shoulder, armpit, left chest, side, waist, hip, buttock, thigh, hamstring, knee, calf muscle, ankle, heel, sole of the foot, top of the foot, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, all five toes together. Now I will take you from your toes up to the crown of the head. Be prepared, make your consciousness ready to move from the toes up to the head. Right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, all the five right toes together. Left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, all five toes together. Visualize all the left toes together. Now move your consciousness right and left as I say the parts alternately. Right soul left sole, both soles together, right heel, left heel, both heels together, right ankle, left ankle, both ankles together, right calf muscle, left calf muscle, both calf muscles together, right knee, left knee, both knees together, right thigh, left thigh, both thighs together, right hamstring, left hamstring, both hamstrings together, right buttock, left buttock, both buttocks together, right hip, left hip, both hips together, waist, lower abdomen, upper abdomen, whole of the abdomen, right side of the chest, left side of the chest, whole chest, right collarbone, left collarbone, center of the collarbones, throat, Right shoulder, left shoulder, 
right arm, left arm, right elbow, left elbow, right hand, left hand, right thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, all five fingers together, palm of the hand, back of the hand, left hand thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, all five fingers together, palm of the hand, back of the hand, shoulders, upper back, middle back, lower back, right side of the back, left side of the back, whole of the spine, back of the neck, front of the neck, the whole neck, chin, lower lip, upper lip, both lips together, teeth, tongue, right cheek, left cheek, both cheeks, right nostril, left nostril, both nostrils, tip of the nose, whole of the nose, right eyelid, left eyelid, right eyeball, left eyeball, both eyeballs together, right eyebrow, left eyebrow, eyebrow center, right temple, left temple, forehead, back of the head, crown of the head, whole face, whole head, now we will take the body in parts. Whole right arm, whole left arm, whole right leg, whole left leg, whole front, whole back, whole right side of the body, whole left side of the body, whole body together whole body together, whole body together. See the whole physical form lying on the floor as though you are standing outside the body. Become aware of the touching points between the floor and your physical body. Become aware of the parts of your whole physical body absorbing energy from the floor. Be aware of the front part of your body deriving prana from the air. Feel the vibrations of prana moving through your body. As a result of this practice, the physical body has become completely quiet. Become aware of the other energy. Be aware that I am instructing you experience tranquility, peace, and quiet. Become aware of the whole environment, your whole body, whole body, whole body, whole body. Please do not sleep. This is the secret of yoga nidra. You should not sleep. You are practicing for spiritual gain. In the practice of yoga nidra, you are neither sleeping nor awake, but somewhere in between. The consciousness is functioning with a little bit of awareness. If you want to achieve this state of yoga nidra, we avoid sleep and do not become lost in thought. Try not to become unconscious. Do not listen mechanically. Listen to the instructions carefully. Follow them and we practice what is said. 
Now visualize the whole body lying on the floor, completely relaxed and tranquil. Feel the body becoming very, very hot and try to experience the sensation of heat throughout the body. Recall the feeling of being very, very hot, whether due to summer sun, a heater or warm clothing. We try to create this sensation of heat now. Try to feel the sensation of heat exactly as you have experienced it in the past. Next, reverse the feeling. Try to feel cold, shivering cold as if you are standing outside in an icy wind, wearing only thin clothing, how chilled we would feel. Trying to feel that coldness through conscious effort because there is no cold here. There are no external influences affecting the body to make you feel cold. Create this sensation of cold with your consciousness. Try to experience this cold. Now try to experience heaviness in the physical body. The body is becoming heavier and heavier. It has become so heavy that you are unable to move any part. You are unable to raise even an eyelid. You are not even able to wiggle the toes or fingers. The body has become so heavy. Now experience the sensation of lightness. Lightness throughout the body, not heaviness, but lightness. Feel the body becoming lighter and lighter and lighter as if it is completely weightless. The body is so light, as light as a piece of cotton. Try to experience the lightness of the physical body. Now we will go on to the chakra awareness. Visualize just your spine lying on the floor, only the spine and not any other part of the body. Feel as if you are standing nearby and watching it. At the very bottom of the spine, see a stem emerging from the inside. At the top of this stem, a flower is forming. Around the flower are several leaves, beautiful green, round leaves with drops of dew glistening on them like pearls. If you shake the leaves, the pearls fragment into many small beads. If you shake them again, the small beads come together again to form big pearls. As you shake the leaves, the water comes together and then disperses and fragments. The lotus flower at Muladhara is dark red with four petals. You are looking at it from the top because the root is underneath the spinal cord, which is lying on the floor. Then at the base of the spine in Swadhisthana, See the vermilion lotus with six petals. The leaves also have drops of water on them, just like those in Muladhara. You can shake them in the same way as you did in Muladhara, and all the water disperses into many pearl-like drops. The water never touches the petals of the lotus flower. Though the lotus is rooted in the bottom of the pond and it rises up through the water, its petals are never wet. Therefore, the sages and yogis advise us always 
to be as detached from everything in the whole universe as the lotus leaf is from the water, completely non-attached. The lotus comes from the water. It only survives due to the water, yet it does not get wet. The water cannot touch it. In the same manner, we all live in the world. We eat and enjoy and suffer. We practice sadhana and we do many things. Yet we should be detached from all of this. Now at Manapura, behind the navel, visualize a 10 petaled yellow lotus. See the leaves underneath sparkling with pearl like drops of dew. Behind the heart at Anahata Chakra, see a 12 petal blue lotus. It also has many leaves underneath, covered with many fine drops of dew. Visualize it. At Vishuddhi, behind the throat is a 16 petal purple lotus with many leaves under it and dew drops shining on them like pearls. At Ajna, behind the eyebrow center, see a two-petaled gray lotus with two leaves beneath it, covered with dewdrops like pearls. And the radiant full moon is above them, about three inches away. Above Ajna chakra at the top back of the head is Bindu. There you will find the bright full moon. And if you go still further above the full moon, another three inches away, you see the thousand petal bright red lotus at Sahasra. There are so many petals at Sahasra and the water droplets are like gleaming corals all around the bottom of them. Now go to the moon again. It is so quiet tranquil, peaceful, and cool. Then go to Ajna. See the dewdrops on the leaves in Ajna, in Vashudi, in Anahata, in Manapura, in Swadhisthana, in Muladhara. As the moonlight strikes them, the drops of water on the leaves shine like hundreds of jewels. Some look simple like pearls and others look like coral. It depends on your angle of vision. They are shining like diamonds, like nuggets of gold and silver, like many moons, like stars. And the flowers are only able to be seen due to the light reflected from those brightly shining jeweled drops. Again, visualize Muladhara with all the leaves and dew drops on them. Then Swadhisthana, Manipura, Anahata, Vishuddhi. Ajna, Bindu, Sahasra. In Sahasra, see the thousand petals. See the leaves with the droplets of water shining like jewels. Feel the qualities of the different chakras. And whatever sensations are emanating from them. Sahasra, Bindu. Ajna, Vishuddhi, Anahata, Manapura, Swadhisthana, Muladhara. Now place your whole physical body on the lotus flower. Your whole physical body is lying relaxed on the lotus and the flower is merging into your physical body.
Now get ready to end our practice. Remember your sankalpa. Again, remember your sankalpa, repeat it mentally. Without opening the eyes, you may quietly sit up. You may place the palms over the eyes and hold them there for some time. When we're ready, we can move the physical body gradually and quietly. And we slowly sit with the head straight, the eyes closed and the palms together. And we close, we chant the sound of Om three times with the hands at the heart. Inhale. Om. Oh. Oh. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Thank you all so, so much. Be sure to drink lots and lots of water. Let us remember that it is a great privilege and a great honor to be together and to carry these practices. So thank you all so much for being here. Be sure to let me know if we have any questions. And of course, be sure to let me know if you want me to send you our recording. And this will be available for the next month or so. Thank you all so much. Okay.